Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. In this daily editorial, we are getting an update from Graphene Manufacturing Group, also known as GMG, traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol GMG. Now, I did just come out about a week and a half ago with the introduction to this company and how they have a unique and proprietary process for developing graphene as I was chatting with the founder and CEO, Craig Nickel, who's also on the call with me now, we were discussing the opportunity in the battery sector. Now, not that long ago, April 22nd, the company came out with news discussing how GMG and the University of Queensland were working together on a project here to develop this graphene aluminum ion battery now craig i want you to explain a little bit about this battery technology we hear a lot about lithium ion batteries but when it comes to graphene aluminum ion batteries what's the difference here and what are the benefits of what you guys are developing thanks Corey. great to be back on here so we, what we're focused on is making a battery which is high performing very easy low cost to, to manufacture based only on graphene and aluminium, no lithium, no copper, and it will be interchangeable with your lithium-ion battery. So it'll be the same voltage and same shape. In fact, you won't even know that there's a different technology inside. Uh, it is the technology that the industry has been waiting for. I can safely say that. It has uh, relative, so far no temperature issues. We need to do more testing at high temperatures, but low temperatures, no issue. There's no expected high temperature issues. So we really do expect to see a, a high performing battery uh, at, at scale once we go through this uh, next testing phase, um, which will, you know, anywhere up to three times energy density and anywhere up to 70 times faster charging, uh, which is a truly revolutionary next uh, generation step change that's required. And I think uh, you know, we're, 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 we've got a number of interested parties already, and no doubt I think we'll continue to see more interested parties grow as the news gets out. So, Craig, some of those claims about the benefits of this graphene aluminum ion battery, as you just said, 70 times faster charging, three times greater storage than lithium ion. And also from what the news release is claiming that these batteries can recharge for a number of cycles without losing their capacity what backs up a lot of these claims? What prior work has been done here to back up this? Great question. We've been working with UQ for some years now on this. Uh, they've uh, published this data in a, uh, in a peer-reviewed journal. Uh, they're one of the world-leading universities uh, in the top 5%. And also, we're working with inside that university is the Australian Institute of Bioengineering Nanotechnology. So it is the institute of nanotechnology in Australia. So a world leading institute in nanotechnology and batteries uh, and, and in other uh, micro and nano forms. The work that we've been working with them on is, is supporting them with our graphene to enable them to show their invention, which is um, some amazing technology to drill holes in our graphene platelets uh, to allow the aluminum atoms to sit tighter, which reduces the amount of weight uh, you need to store charge, which gives us the up to three times energy density claim. Um, the aluminium ion battery is a well-known laboratory product that is uh, proven to be a hybrid supercapacitor battery. And that's well documented out in the science world. So they haven't invented that part, um, uh, but that has provided uh, that, that known uh, understanding a platform to then go and finish this last piece of work, which UQ has done, which we believe is patentable, uh, and we have licensed from UQ globally. So with this research project and development project with the University of Queen Queensland, what products then, what batteries are being developed here? So the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll make a uh, interchangeable uh, coin cell for commercial customer trials. We should do that in the next six months. And then we'll, we'll do a pouch pack battery, which can go into anything, phones, batteries, EVs, grid, any personal appliances. Um, we'll do that, we think, in the next 18 months. So that's that project we'll do with UQ. 
Um, we're aiming to bring out uh, our coin cells to market. So we're aiming to go into the battery manufacturing um, and you know, we'd really like to launch our coin cells uh, in, in, and produce them uh, here in Australia um, in, in 2022. That's our first um, space and timeline. Uh, the next project after that we're working on and when we actually go to market with pouch packs, um, it wouldn't be too long after that. Um, we're using existing technology to make the batteries. We're just changing the chemistry and changing materials that go into them, into the cells. So what research is being done here then? Is it to prove those claims that these are much more efficient and effective than lithium ion batteries or is it to actually develop these products? Now that the work is to, to develop these products, that's the next uh, space we're working on and to show that they are directly interchangeable with lithium ion batteries in a number of different shapes and sizes and, and voltages. Uh, and then show that we can supply them as, as a supplier of batteries. Um, and that's really exciting, to be honest. We're offering something which is genuinely next generation technology. It's, uh, you know, aluminium is, is the most recycled material on the earth. 90% of, uh, of aluminium is, is, is recycled globally. It's obviously a, a, a far easier way to, 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 to obtain uh, aluminium thousand times more valuable than your than your lithium your uh your, your cobalt your manganese and any other rare earth so we're sitting with a very easy to obtain material low cost recyclable with our graphene we make electricity and gas it's a very powerful combination and set of ip going into an enormous market which is often claimed these days is just unlimited uh, the battery market is not just no longer, well, it could be a trillion dollars. It could be, well, we just don't know. It's unlimited. Uh, I've seen that a lot by various different people, uh, commentators in, in the recent uh, weeks especially. It's very, very exciting. Uh, and, you know, these uh, commercial prototypes we're going to make, I think will be the first step to show uh, GMG's journey into making batteries. Okay. So if I understand you correctly, you're saying that the possibility here is to essentially have this technology able to put in and replace current batteries, really of any shape and size. We obviously don't know that for sure yet, but then in terms of costs, what are you estimating the cost to be if you are using different materials? Yeah, the cost is, is what we see is, is at, at what we lithium ion batteries are, are needing to be. And you know, because our main feedstock is, is aluminium, natural gas and electricity, there are a few countries in the world where you can make these from raw materials and at very low cost and very competitive costs compared to what you see uh, for lithium, which obviously has a, a supply chain stretched over many countries and many different material supply sources. So countries obviously that pop out are North America and countries like Canada and America um, and, and also some Middle Eastern countries which will pop out as well, which are fantastic platforms for making completely raw material made up through to a battery cell and then a battery pack uh, products. Um, and obviously Australia has got uh, a lot of those uh, you know, parameters as well, which is why we'll, we'll do our initial battery uh, manufacturing here. The exact markets we go into and the exact property um, properties we'll look to, to, to push will we'll get evolving over time as we start to engage customers in, with our batteries that, that we'll produce with UQ. And then we'll start to be clearer on exactly um, which countries and which markets and, and what type of battery cell property we want to progress faster um, uh, as, as we go through that. So we'll be really customer-led here because this battery can literally go into and, and economically go into any application you can think of, including even lead acid batteries for um, your vehicles. Okay, so it really is then just this move to get these new batteries or this new battery technology into the market. What other competitors or competitive technologies are out there that are in competition with you? Yeah, and I think that's a very good question because there are a lot of battery techs out there and it may be difficult for people to really understand the solid state batteries are certainly something that people might see some of, you know, some, something that you could, could come in. 
you know, really what I've seen there, solid state batteries really aren't going to get commercialized. They're all in the lab and they're not going to be seen to be manufactured until probably another five, 10 years away. Um, and we're certainly not in any way not engaging in solid state batteries as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll have something hopefully to talk about that shortly. But solid state batteries are some way away. And anyway, our aluminum mine battery is as competitive in a lot of the features already that um, solid state batteries are as well. You, you, you then got your, obviously, you've got various different types of additional elements, changes in your lithium ion. So some people, some companies have come out with different types of electrolytes with a lithium ion, which aren't, say, they can't burst into fire, which some lithium, which some of those batteries have. And so that's, that's an interesting technology, but it doesn't actually change the game. You cannot get away from the fact that lithium has some, some serious constraints in a battery cell. And then there's probably the third area that you might think of as, as a competitor is like a lithium sulfur battery. That's a new technology that some companies have been coming out with. We've actually supplied a lot of our graphene to companies trying to um, progress that. Uh, so, and, and then there are some, just a, a bit of an add-on, there are some elements of, around silicon um, add additions to lithium ion. But it's substantially, and this is the thing, all of the other batteries that are pretty much out there trying to progress new technology add add-ons are based on lithium. And as a result, you're in the lithium supply chain. And the lithium supply chain is fundamentally based on um, processing it all in two countries, China and Chile. And that growth will be in some way controlled by that supply chain if not on top of the manganese, the cobalt, and every other uh, rare material, that your earth material, you need to make your batteries work. So we are a step outside of that. We're a complete supply chain that can operate in one country from scratch through to the battery cell unpack, which is really quite unique, especially at the performance levels we have and the cost levels we have. Okay, and I think it's important for people to go back and listen to that first interview because of the technology that you guys have to produce graphene, which is the key component here. Craig, summarize for us then how these uh, batteries, how this project too with the University of Clean Queensland is then going to get these batteries and this technology out to the mainstream. Yeah, and um, the, the first thing is we get commercial prototypes. We give that to prospective customers. And then we are already engaging in battery cell manufacturing equipment supplies. There's an enormous number of them. Um, we're um, very close to hiring our global battery consultant in technical commercial matters. Um, and so we have already a global footprint uh, with our board and our focus um, with our suppliers and our partners. Um, so we will certainly be focusing on where is the best place for this to sell. And then once we've got through that process of articulating that with customers will then start engaging and, and coming back to the market and saying this is the first battery supply project we want to build in Australia but then this is the next step after that so and we aim to do that really in the, in the, in the next six months okay hey Craig I really appreciate this update this is a very interesting development for the company and I think really this uh, move towards this graphene aluminum ion battery uh, it could be, well, change, marketably changing for the battery sector. But if anybody has any follow-up questions, please email me, fleck at kereport.com. We'll continue to follow along with the news out of GMG, and also I will get any of those questions answered for all of you. Craig, I appreciate the update. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Corey.